Okay, today we are going to be talking about linear graphs. Yesterday you talked about linear tables, and today we're going to be talking about the graphing portion of it. So first things first is we need to know how to determine if a graph is a linear or not. Okay, so looking at these two graphs up here, now first thing we need to know is that linear, look at it has the word line right there in it. Okay, so we are looking for a straight line and hopefully you said the one on the left has a straight line, so this one would be linear. Over here, notice there are curves to this graph. Okay, so this one would be nonlinear. Okay, so anytime you have a straight line, whether it is slanting this way or that way or straight up and down or horizontal, these are all linear graphs. Okay, so let's move on to the next portion, which how do we find the slope and the y-intercept on a graph? So I know that you guys last year found slope and y-intercept in seventh grade. Okay, so hopefully this is just a review for some of us. Now for slope, on a graph we find the rise and we find the run between two points. So looking at this first graph on the left, okay, two points were already given to me, okay, but I could use any point. And I like to use the points that cross at a nice intersection here, like this one and this one. Notice they cross at the corners of the graph because that's easier. It's not going to be like a decimal or a fraction. So if I want to find the rise between the two points, notice that I went up 1, 2, 3, 4, and the run, I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so another thing you need to look at, is this going to be a positive or a negative graph? Notice that if I'm looking at it, like I would read a book from left to right, okay, it is going downhill. So that would make it a negative slope. The rise always goes on the top, and the run would go on the bottom. Okay, so rise over run. Okay, then if I want to determine what the y-intercept is, okay, that's where it crosses the y-axis. And the y-axis is the one that goes straight up and down. And if I'm looking at my graph, Notice it crosses right here, okay, and if I'm looking, that is at 1, 2, 3, so my y-intercept would be 0, 3. Okay, moving on to the second graph, okay, here I have two points already identified for me, okay, but again, I need to find the rise and the run, okay, so I'm looking here. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, and notice I'm only counting the spaces. I'm not counting the lines, okay, so I go down 4, and I'm going over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, again, we count the spaces. Okay, so it is going positive because as I read this from left to right like a book, it is going uphill, so my slope would be the rise over the run. Now, unlike the negative 4 fifths in the first one, that one couldn't have been simplified, but since this one can be simplified, I want you to simplify it down the best you can. For the y-intercept, again, that's where it crosses the y-axis, okay, and here our graph is crossing right here at negative 2, so my y-intercept would be 0, negative 2. We always write it as a point. Okay, always 0 and then whatever your y value is. Then the last graph here, we have no points listed for us, okay, but I see a couple points that cross that nice intersections for us. Okay, and a few of these you might just have to give your best guess or your best estimate for it, okay, because some of them aren't really exact. 
Okay, so I see this point looks like a good one. And let's see, this one looks pretty good up here. So let's use that one. Okay, so again, we're going to find our rise and our run. But one thing that I did not tell you in the first two graphs, you need to make sure you're looking at your scale factor. So notice that going on the Y's, we are actually going up by fives every line. So I'm not just going up by one, two, three, four, five. I'm actually going up by five, 10, 15, 20, 25 for my rise. Okay, so it's important you're looking at your scale factor. Then the run, okay, this one, we're going up by, it looks like ones, right? Ones every time. Yeah, they just skip the even numbers, but we're still going by ones, so that's okay. We have one, two, three, four, five, six for my run. So the slope, okay, we're going uphill, so it would be 25 over 6, okay, and that can't be reduced down evenly, so we're going to leave it just like that. Then for the y-intercept, okay, notice that it's kind of crossing between 5 and 10, okay, so we can make a little estimate there. I'm going to say at 7, so let's say 0, 7 for the y-intercept. All right, writing equations from graphs, now that we have um, from the last slide, we figured out how to find slope and y-intercept, writing equations from a graph are pretty easy then. If you remember our linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay, so we need to find the slope first. Okay, so let's do that. I see a nice point here, and I see a nice point here. Okay, so if I want to find the rise and the run between those two points, looks like I am going up 2 and over 3. I took a look at my scale factor to make sure I was just going by 1s. Okay, so I'm just going to make myself a mental note and say my slope is going to be 2 thirds. Now, hopefully some of you okay, are stopping me because you're like, no, it is going downhill, so it should be a negative two-thirds. Okay, then, let's find the y-intercept. Okay, the y-intercept is right here at 5. That's where the graph crosses the y-axis. So our y-intercept is going to be 5. So from here... We are then going to plug in negative two-thirds in for m and five in for b. I'm going to keep everything else the same, so I'm still going to have y equals. My slope was a negative two-thirds. I keep the x there. Plus, instead of writing b, I'm going to write five. So that would be the equation for this graph. Second graph, okay, let's do the same thing. Okay, let's find a couple points. This point looks good. This point looks good to find the slope. Looks like my rise and my run are the same. Okay, so for this one, my slope ends up being 2 over 2, but if you know 2 divided by 2 is just 1. And it's going uphill. Okay, so my slope is just 1 for this one. Then I have my y-intercept. Looks like it's right here at 0. Okay, so my b is going to be 0. Okay, so this one, I would write y equals, my slope was 1x, my y-intercept was 0. Now this one's a kind of unique because we don't have to say plus zero if we don't want to. And whenever we have a one by a variable, we also don't have to write that. Okay, I will accept either of these answers. 
this is like the best answer if you can understand and grasp why we don't have to put a 1 there and don't have to put a plus 0 there. Okay, um, but this one I understand makes the most sense to people for the beginning here. All right, the last step in this lesson is making a table from a graph. Okay, so when you make tables, I, I typically like to make them vertically as shown. Okay, sometimes you will see them horizontally. Okay, the x values always go first and the y values always go second. Okay, so this graph is nice because it has a lot of points ready there for us. So I just start by writing the smallest point that I have. Okay, so I have a negative 4. That point right there would be negative 4, 0 because I'm not going up or down. Okay, the x value again always goes first. Next, I'd keep going up to this point here. Okay, and we went over to negative 2 and up to 1. Then I'd keep going okay, here at my y intercept. Okay, I went over. 0 and up to 2. And then I'd have my next point. I went over 2 and up 3. Now hopefully you notice there's a pattern going on because it is a linear function. So there is a pattern, right? Because we're going up at a steady rate. See here how we add 2 to our x values every time. And notice our y values over here, we added 1 every time. Okay, So that's how we can also find our rise over our run for our slope. All right, the last and final example here, again, x values always go first, y values always go second. Okay, and again, I'm going to work my way from left to right. Okay, so here I have my first point. I went over 0, and then I went up to 3. My next point that was given to me here, I went over 3 and up 1. And then notice they didn't give us any more points. Okay, But I can see there is another point that's going to stick with the same pattern that we have. Okay, And I went over to 6 and down negative 1. Now, see, we have a pattern going on here, as I explained before, plus 3, plus 3. So I can assume that the next point would be 9 here. And then here, we are subtracting 2 every time. So I can assume that the next point would be negative 3. Okay, so even if you don't have all of the points, you can still go and continue the rest of the table with the pattern that's given to you. All linear equations, all linear graphs will have a pattern because they are a straight line.